And uh, a lot of times we don't get a, a, a lot of uh, percent of the things we work on, whether it's something you work on together or we work on as the executive and the legislature, 99% of them have no issues at all. Years, uh, but you will see that we have turned this county around and we have a lot of great things we're going to go through and we're going to talk about some challenges ahead. Uh, I also want to thank the county workers. We never give you enough love, whether you're a department head or other, and, and change this county for the better uh, betterment of the taxpayers of Orange County. So I want to thank you. And last, my family, I see my mom in the audience. I don't know if my dad made it or not, but uh, he did he's somewhere. They will sit separate. I don't know why. They've been married for a long time. I guess it's good to have a break. Um, and of course, my wife. Uh, I never, of all people, show her uh, the amount of thanks that she deserves for not only being, raising our be three beautiful kids, putting up with the politics, uh, putting up with the military, the other stuff. And her husband also keeps these other ha hobbies of being a beekeeper and raising chickens and stuff on the side. So all that combined, I have a very wonderful supporting wife and I do appreciate everything you do. <laughs> the, state, the state of Orange County is strong. Let me tell you guys, it feels good to say that. You know where we've been the last couple of years. And we've turned a corner. So let's start going through this. And you know, it's funny, Dave Hoover asked me in the back, did you get a haircut? We're going to get there, Dave. <laughs> Making a difference. So these are the, these are the, real, the, 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 the topics we're going to hit. We're going to talk about the budget. We're going to talk about the economy. We're going to talk about infrastructure. And we're going to talk about uh, helping our neighbors. And you guys know I like doing it Tony Robbins style. So here we go. Finances. We have to talk about haircut, Dave. Getting a haircut. Here you go. This is, this is me yesterday. The legislature knows who this gentleman is. Anthony Mancinelli is the oldest barber, not in, um, in America. He's now in the Guinness Book of World Records, 105 years old. He cut this hair yesterday. So I'm, that's, that's why I'm looking, I think, a little bit better than normal. Our <laughs> governments can talk about this. Wasn't easy. Early retirement helped. Uh, tightening the belt, all our department heads, the legislature working with me, we made this happen. Let's talk about what else we've been doing. Our fund balance, this is important. 2013, Orange County government, the year before I took office, used $36 million of their fund balance, their rainy day account. Last year, we used zero. We didn't use one bit of our fund balance to get through the budget. That's how much saving we've been able to make. And I know Noah Nadelson's out there, and I know Tanya Mulrad's out there, too. The, the people that deal, Tanya's our finance commissioner. Noah Nadelson is our financial advisor. When you talk to Moody's, this counts. The fund balance has actually started to grow again this year. This is a major turnaround. You guys know where we were two years ago. Things were all heading in the wrong direction. Sales tax, our sales taxes, sales tax around the county and around the county are growing. I'm not trying to signal people out, but there are counties not too far from Orange County, south of us as well, that sales tax are actually going the opposite. The tax base, this is something that's very critical. It's really a tangible barometer of where our economy is too. People say, how's the economy doing? I don't know. This is a tangible one. So from 2008 to 2014, our economy, our tax base shrunk. In the summer of 2014, again in last year, Number 15, and now heading in this direction, John McCarrick can tell you all about it, our tax base growing around the county. That is a tangible, tangible barometer of where the economy in Orange County is. January 2014, I take office, CSCA contract expired. Contract expired. Staff and Chairs Association for Orange County Community College expired. Orange County Community College Faculty Association expired. Superior Officers Association, expired. Deputy Sheriff's PBA, expired. Pretty much everything has been expired. Now, today, every union contract has settled the first time in at least a decade. That is a barometer when you go to talk to Moody's or financial people and they ask you, where are you with your raises? Are you going to give them? Do you have to pay retro? How do you budget for this? This is a very important when we present our case to financial advisors. So the summary for finance and budget, the county budget $122 million. We had unrealistic tax projections, officers and mayors in the room. This is important. 
when they call and ask us where do we think things are going and their budgets reflect it. Joe DiStefano, Charlie Carnes, I see you all out there, you know what I'm talking about. Before, now it's starting to grow. Union contracts expired, all union contracts signed. Before, our county workforce was at an all-time high. Now we're, we've been able to reduce the workforce without any layoffs. So let's talk about economic development, because I see Maureen in the front and center, Lynn Sion, and all the economic development. Lori, is Lori here from IDA? You got, okay, Lori, thank you. Okay, I want to make sure the whole team's here. So this is who, who is the team for economic development when you come to Orange County. One or another or all five deal with businesses of all different levels. County government, of course, local government, they're in charge of the approvals. The IDA, in charge of the incentives. Uh, Orange County Partnership, which is in charge of promotion, and I, I call them like our cheerleaders. They walk the businesses through the process with us. Chamber of Commerce, the backbone of America, uh, doing all sorts of stuff, very good relationship. Uh, every month, keeping on the beat of what's going on, the pulse of the businesses. So let's talk about economic development. Stairs Pharmaceutical in Chester, near and dear to my heart. They came in, they met with myself and the partnership was about a month or two after I took office, said, we want to do an expansion. We're not sure if we're going to stay in Orange County. We got a couple other locations. What can you do for us? I'm glad we've been able to, as a team, allow them to expand. 25 new jobs, great company. Amerisource Bergen, it's now uh, done with the approval process. We're working with them. We're going to try to, we're pushing them to uh, work with local labor. So our, our local neighbors are working on this job. At the end of the day, they will have a tw 121 new jobs. This is a Fortune 500 company, uh, $80 million investment, 164 new jobs. Pharmacam, medical marijuana, when it was approved in New York State, and I talked a lot about it last year, so I won't go too much into it, but this does help people. I was a skeptical person about it. I watched Asanja Gupta special on CNN. And more importantly, a mom grabbed me at the local shop right in Chester and told me that her child has a seizure every half hour and medical marijuana is the key. We've had people from every top of the law authorizing it. So I am proud that not only did we win one, but we came in first out of all the competitors. They are under construction now. They're growing and they're, they're providing service to the market. So uh, I, I think it's a good positive thing and it's another feather in the cap for uh, economic development. Pratt & Whitney is finishing their third building in Orange County. They make the skin for the F-35 strike fighter, the new uh, fighter jet for the future, as well as other important uh, aviation related um, supplies and, and materials. A hundred new jobs. It's a company that anybody in this room would be proud to work for. They pay for education. Very impressive every time I meet with their staff and the management there, what's going on. I, I put President Container in here because I hired 33 full-time new real things. I'm going to tell you, and you're going to see why this is important as we go through this. Open for business, we did when we started here, was we would meet with any company, any business. A nail salon, um, um, with an insurance agent, any business that comes and e emails us, we'll go and meet with them, we'll talk to them, see if they have any issues the county can do, and we'll also try to help promote them. Montrain, I see my friend Charlie Degliomini up here. And, and Charlie, I, I'm going to, I, I every four of the face and the boss for Montrain uh, project up in Sullivan County. Here's Charlie and I up there a few months ago. The important thing is, is a couple things. Is number one, we had a job fair in this building a few months ago, packed to the gills from Orange County companies that wanted to work up there. They're working up there now, many of them. Some of them, in, now we're in the construction phase. The next phase will be once they're open. And I will tell you, while we were up there, Many, many construction companies, plumbers, uh, engineers, you name it, are up there. You see the, the household names from Orange County up there working on this casino. It truly is a regional benefit. And Charlie, you give everybody your cell phone when you're crazy. I do the same thing. So does Ed Harrison. Uh, but you are really responsive. And uh, I appreciate you being very welcome in Orange County after that uh, competitive process. So this is good stuff. Stewart International Airport. I know my friend Ed Harrison is here, and Mike Torelli as well. Uh, wonderful stuff going on there. We've gotten to know each other. We're, we're really close friends, all of us, over the last year. And th they're just completing a $100 million runway improvement. Uh, they also announced Allegiant Airlines last week. American Airlines is uh, adding a fourth daily flight. These are good, positive things. A lot of times you hear the negative. Things are happening. The International Associates of Travel Agents have, des have designated Stewart as an official New York metropolitan airport. Why is that important? 
Now when people buy their tickets on all these different search engines, they will actually show Stuart instead of not having us on one of those uh, different options to go to. And the cargo, which I think is sexy, continues to go. Cargo, cargo jobs are good stuff. So these are positive things. And you know what? I'll go back to it. I was on the, on the Stewart Airport Commission when it was run by National Express. It's a night and day difference, the commitment that the Port Authority has in this airport compared to what we had before that. So I do appreciate what you guys do, and things are heading in the right direction there. Foreign trade terminology, but when I took office, most of the members of the foreign trade zone were dead. That's how long it hadn't been used. I'm happy to see that they've been replaced with living people. And uh, we are, we've had a global international companies, because that's the way the world is today. We had our, uh, at our first meeting, we had a US Department of Commerce uh, representative come up here, walk us through. We have a very unique and strong foreign trade zone. So it's not only important for Orange County, but we are working with Putnam County, and even as far as I think Nassau and Suffolk is asking us to help them with foreign trade zone benefits. It's really going to be a truly um, regional and, and, and global uh, impact. So these are good positive things. I wouldn't be, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about agriculture. This is, and, and we picked this map for one reason. Shows you how much neighboring counties um, generate in the millions. Orange County is really the crown jewel of agriculture in the Hudson Valley. So 16% of Orange County is active farmland now. Last year we received $100,000 uh, in a grant to market our farm markers. Awesome, great stuff. Ask my wife, I think we spend most of our money at the farmer's market in, in Goshen. And I think Lindsay owned back in your days, you could probably attest to that. Agricultural plan that we passed here, legislature knows us. We didn't have one negative comment. At a public hearing, somebody always has something negative to say. Not at this plan. So I'm proud of the work that Dave Church and, and uh, all our, our partners did to get that passed and put through and, and make it so smooth. Cornell Cooperative Extension, I know Lucy's here. I saw her earlier. Lucy does a wonderful job. And Lucy, thank you for everything you do. Uh, you're a good friend, and you're a good friend to the agricultural family out there. So thank you. This is going to be our new logo for farmer's market. So we're really pushing to support these. These are great things. So when we came in January 2014, it was 6.4%. Now we're at 4.5%. We're beating the state and national averages. These are great things. These aren't an anomaly. So let's talk about the jobs record. We take office, and I think this is higher, but I'm going with what the Department of Labor has. We had lost 6,600 jobs in Orange County between that 08 and 14 period. So in six years, we lost 6,600 jobs. You know it. It could be you guys in the audience. We take office. 7,400 new jobs in Orange County. These are tangible, real barometers. We're heading back. We're not, we're not where we need to be, but we're heading in the right direction. I would much rather be here than never be here. So buying local. We used to buy our county cars from Syracuse. You've heard this. Town supervisor, see Doug Bloomfield. When you buy stuff off the state bid, you're buying it in Rochester, you're buying it in Syracuse. Great places to visit, but they don't help our local economy. Now, we've just been able to implement through Jimmy uh, Burpo, our, our commissioner of um, purchasing, a what's called um, best uh, value, which allows us to buy local cars. So you might have gotten a cheaper car in Rochester, but you're paying more money by the time you drive up there and pick it up. Or what happens if there's something wrong? You want to go all the way up there for a warranty issue? I know it's transferable here. This is the right thing to do. When you have people that want to be members of the partnership or the Chamber of Commerce and they say, what value do we have? All our stuff is, all the business that the county or the state or the Port Authority do is from out of town. That's not the case anymore. It's not the case with the Port Authority. It's not the case with, with uh, Orange County government. So we have representatives from Healy Brothers and Phil's Ford. Healy Brothers is in Middletown or, where we, or, or Walk Hill. I don't want to fight over this, Joe. Middletown's fine, all right. <laughs> and Phil, Phil's Ford in Port Jervis. Could you guys stand up? I know you're in here somewhere. It, thank you so much, gentlemen. Thank you. We are proud to do business with you. You pay taxes. Businesses pay taxes here. You are entitled to get some type of return. I would hate to have a Ford dealership from Port Jervis see a Ford driving by from another county way upstate that doesn't pay property taxes. The same thing with Healy Brothers. Chevrolet and all the other products you offer. We'd also like to, uh, and we did welcome them. So let's talk about some hotels. 
We see a change in hotels. It has been reported lately, a lot of them under construction. A few years ago, a lot of them were being flipped and uh, used for different uses. Now they're being reverted back, and now you see a, very, um, a lot of activity, at least five hotels right now under construction in Orange County. One in Walk Hill, $10 million investment, one in, um, in Way Wayanda, and we have a number of other ones that are coming through the line. So why is that important? The hotel motel tax. We have a tax, everybody is 13, of $200. $100,000. Why is that important? Well, there's a special here. Dolph, I want you to stand up quick. Dolph Zugler is, and I'm pronouncing this right, right? Because I always call him Dolph. He's the owner of Chateau Hawthorne. He's going to throw any party you want, and you let him know. He'll take care of it. When I, the, in the waning weeks of the county exec race, I went to an event there, and he pulled me aside, great guy, and he said, I got to tell you one thing. And you could sit, Dolph, I apologize. He said, I got to tell you, we're paying this hotel motel tax, and he has rooms at the Chateau Hawthorne for guests. They get nothing in return. No, tourism didn't show them. It. They were using the money generated from him to balance our, pay, our, 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 our paychecks and balance our budget, not putting it back into what really it was intended to do or what it should have been intended to do. So, Dolph, you were the guy that really started Orange County to head in the right direction. You deserve the credit. So what are we doing? Last year at the State of the County address, I showed you what we're doing. We're not doing what we're supposed to do back then, right? Our neighbors, Sullivan, much smaller, only spending a little bit less than we are. Ulster, much smaller population. Dutchess, smaller population. All spending significantly more comparatively to Orange County. Last year, the county legislature backed me up. We beefed it up to $1 million. And what does that mean? We're going to continue to beef it up, by the way. We had a brand new uh, tourism website. We had mu much more hits than we had in the future. You're going to see that. But here's the thing. People that would visit those websites would be able to not only visit it and look at all the stuff we have to offer, but they could actually book hotel rooms from there. While you got their attention, now you can grab them to book rooms. And it just makes it seem anytime any of us travel, we want it easier. So look at what that's done already. We've doubled the amount of traffic when people come to visit our sites. Let's continue more. We have new types of attractions in Orange County. Last year, the Farm to Fork Fondo, over 300 cyclists from around the world came here and they rode their, their, the cycle race around Orange County, stopping at key agricultural uh, points. And they're going to so they were highlighting not only cycling, but highlighting eating local and eating healthy. Great stuff. And they're coming back again. These are the good things. These aren't just a one shot. I don't know if I've ever mentioned this before, but uh, <laughs> the air show is one of the uh, things I'm very proud to have been part of the team. I see um, we have Alan Mack from the Army as well in the audience. I'm going to hit on you a little bit later on in another slide. But Ed Harrison, we put this together in 72 days, and it was a great show. If you didn't go, you missed it, but don't worry, you got a second chance. We're going to have the Thunderbirds back this year. It's just a wonderful economic development thing. The last air show was in 2003. So now we have it two years back to back, and we're already working on next year's show. So we have this as an annual event. Here's some photos from it. Great stuff. And uh, just look at the amount of people that came to this thing. It's just going to be wonderful. And if you thought it was great last year, these Thunderbirds are really a top-notch team. I think I talked too much about it. I know. Uh, my staff is. Here's another thing, the film industry. The importance of this film industry, The Blind Spot, great show on TV. I actually saw the episode last week where it was filmed at Stewart Airport. The other one, Law & Order SVU. These were just filmed in the last few months here. So uh, Al Mack, who's in there, I promised to pick on. Uh, Al, just stand up for one second. Al Alan is an Army helicopter pilot. <laughs> now, Al Mack was shot down in Afghanistan in early 2002 in Operation Anaconda. If you remember that, they were, uh, it was, it was uh, a hot time and it was a very dangerous place, da very dangerous mission. Um, people died on that mission. And uh, after 32 years, how many years, Alan? 35 years, he's going to be a retiring Orange County resident, flying still for the Army today. He's going to be retiring later on this summer. But Alan, we thank you for your service. If you're a friend of mine, I, I try to embarrass you. But it's a, I think it's worth it. You deserve the clapping twice. So 
Uh, economic development, the summary. Unemployment was at 6.4. Today it's at 4.5. We lost 6,600 jobs. We've gained back 7,400 in the last two years. Property tax base, it was in a decline. Property tax base has now grown two years in a row. A stagnant foreign trade zone, a functioning foreign trade zone, a neglected tourism, a focus on tourism. So let's talk about good government. Amp LaGuardia. And I see Al Alex Jamison in the back room, my partner from Chester. Camp LaGuardia, it was a good thing that Camp LaGuardia closed. I'll repeat it, it was a good thing that it closed. And it was good that Orange County government came to the rescue to do that. We deserved the credit. I was a supervisor back then. It was just a bad thing for Orange County. And it literally changed overnight, not only Chester and Blooming Grove, it changed the Heritage Trail. Try letting your wife or kids going on there when you had the issues going on there back then compared to now. So let's talk about it. Last week, my friend Steve Brush, the chairman of the legislature, and the IDA uh, got together and, we, we, and the IDA purchased the development rights. And I'll tell you what that's going to do. I'll tell you what that's going to do. It, it got us out of this terrible contract that we had with Malco. There's nobody in Southern Orange County and no community that's going to welcome 700 high density homes. I don't explain that anymore. So let's talk about what we can do with this. So now the IDA will help market Camp LaGuardia for shovel ready sites. I've talked about this in the campaign. I, uh, this was a wish list uh, with Chester. So let's talk a little bit more about it. Commercial rateables, these are good things. We all want them. So let's look about. This is a concept. So if you walk with me real quickly, this turquoise, this purple, and the brown here is really the, the blooming growth section. It's zoned residential today. What we foresee as a concept, again, we're going to have to work this out with the IDA, the partnership, and the local um, communities, Chester and Blooming Grove. We see a commercial cul-de-sac in here with a number of parcels on here, several ready that we can develop. Maureen can tell you how desperately we are in need when companies come here to really have a truly shovel ready um, uh, sites available. Blooming Grove, we think, would like to change their zoning from residential to commercial to mirror this. The bottom here, this yellow thing I put out here, is parking the Heritage Trail. Literally less than an hour ago, I was running right here on the Heritage Trail. I do that before debates before speeches. This is, it. we need parking for the Harris Trail. Go to Monroe, it's stacked, commuters are using it. You can never have enough and you can never make it more accommodating uh, for, for the public. Over here is more of the Chester parcel. It's kind of wet, it can revert back to farmland. There's all different types of concepts out there. Some of them are called a pizza farm, believe it or not. You can raise everything that would be the ingredients of a pizza. These are some of the concepts that have been floating out there. So. That is our concept, and this is the beginning of a new life for Camp LaGuardia. Back on the tax rolls, by the way. So uh, stay tuned. Uh, this is a definite positive uh, addition or change than what we've seen over the last couple of years. So no more nonsense in front of the Chester and Blooming Grove board pushing for 700 houses. It's not going to happen. This, I believe, the Chester zoning allows for this right now. This is more doable. And by the way, I live a half a mile away from here. I raised my kids right down the road from here. So this hits home. Valley View, last uh, year in the budget address, I, I, I announced that we're going to no longer be talking about closing, selling, keeping. We're moving forward with, camp, with, with Valley View as county run, and we're heading in the right direction. Lawrence Ledoux is in the audience, gets no love, but you do today. We've spent a lot of you is heading in the right direction. We have a parcel of land right here, this green section, that's off the tax rolls. The town of Goshen gets no tax money from it. We lease it out to farmers every year. One of the concepts that we're, that we're looking at is with an RFP, a request for proposal, is to maybe have a household name like Crystal Run, Horizon, or one of the hospital groups, maybe build a medical facility here, maybe senior housing, so if one of the one person, uh, the husband, has to be in um, serious care at Valley View, and the wife wants to be near him, maybe they have a place here so you can grow old together 
and truly have a community of continuing care. Let's talk about our county clerk. We have the infamous Team Orange, Annie Rabbit. She's really been a big partner of mine uh, to not only get through a lot of the difficulties, but really been at the, at, at the table, cutting spending, changing government. She now implemented a new e-recording program. Now people can look at land records, mortgages, deeds online. And you can do this 24-7, by the way. Last year, she bought in uh, $35,100 during this. One of the other many important things that she does, first of all, she's the face of Orange County. You talk about DMV, you talk about pistol permits, passports, you name it. Those things are all under her purview as the county clerk. But she also has been now recharging the veterans discount program. And we're gonna need Lynn Sion and the Chamber of Commerce to uh, have more partners in the business community to make sure that it's, it's a uh, success. So these are great things. And Andy, you're doing a wonderful job. We're happy to have you. I'm happy to have you as a partner. I know, we're gonna get to you, Dave. Don't get, uh, uh, we're getting there. So take a look at this, guys. This was this morning. Imagine if you lived here and this was your neighbor. This is, I mean, this is, a, this is one of the problems we have with blight in not only America, not only New York State, but across uh, Orange County. So what am I proposing to do? A few months ago, I directed the county attorney to look at updating with the health department a, a new code for in, in the public health law, which would allow us to partner with local municipalities. I talked talk to Mayor DiStefano. How many, you said my name four times. I got in trouble for it during your address. I think I'm up to two or three. So we can partner with places like the city of Middletown, the city of Port Jervis, the city of Newburgh, with their building inspectors, which, with their fire code inspectors, to help enforce violations of the health law. So what we are going to do is we are going to develop a new health code. I'm gonna be sending it to the legislature and then we're gonna send it to Albany to get it passed so we can start enforcing it here in Orange County. Other counties around the state are already starting this process. So this is the right thing to do. I look forward to working with the legislature on this. This is gonna be a good, positive thing. This should not be happening in Orange County. So. Cracking down on welfare fraud, one of the, one of the most positive things uh, that we've been starting to do here. And if you talk to the welfare fraud team, they've never been happier. They've worked here, some of them, over 27 years and have never seen welfare fraud taken seriously until now. And we're getting there, and it's only getting better. So these are the number of cases, up 73%, saving taxpayers $4.8 million. When I started this and I said we saved $40 million in county government, we're saving millions of dollars less in welfare that we used to pay, partly because the economy is doing better. Also, at the same time, peop less people are using welfare benefits. So these are good, positive things. And I want to say that the DSS has also done a wonderful job helping people with our jobs office, Steve Knob, getting people from welfare to work and heading them in the right direction. We're going to talk about that in a minute as well. Guns and narcotics. This is, everybody makes fun of this photo, but Dave and the sheriff like it. As super troopers, if you've ever seen that movie, the younger people out there have. Uh, this is a super uh, troopers photo. And this was in, in Port Jervis. Uh, May, uh, Mayor Decker and, and uh, Chief Warden, I'll get you in the next, next state of the county with this. But this was in Port Jervis, and this was right before Thanksgiving uh, that this, uh, this arrest happened. Uh, illegal drugs, uh, the, the prosecution doubled. Guns and recovery more than doubled. Felony narcotic indictments more than doubled. These are good, positive things. And the sheriff, another positive picture as well. Last year we had, and look, this is good stuff. I try to make it humorous, uh, but it's also serious stuff. Housed over 125 federal prisoners, bringing in over a million dollars in extra revenue to Orange County. Uh, received the CALEA accreditation, only the second county in the state. And this is the prestigious Triple Crown, all the accreditations. What do they mean besides the sheriff having a plaque or a picture like this? It saves us money less insurance, when you have these accreditations, you're showing the country that, and you're showing your, your peers, the other counties, that you know how to run a sheriff's office. So uh, I'm very proud of that. And this, by the way, was taken a week and a half ago at the last police graduation in Orange County. Five people that are deputies graduated that. Four of those deputies are female. 
So uh, also adding to diversity of our department. <laughs> the prayer breakfast. We started to do this. Other counties told me to do this. Now, I'm a man of faith. Um, I'm not an expert at it. And I was a little nervous about doing it. But uh, our office said, let's give it a shot. It's very successful in Dutchess, very successful in Putnam. Those two counties helped us do this. And it was a sold out breakfast. Uh, hundreds of people attended from all faiths, Jewish, Christian, Muslim, everybody. Some people that were maybe not even sure where they believed, all felt comfortable and had some words of win wisdom and inspire, uh, inspiration from people uh, that have faith has changed their lives. Good, positive stuff. And how can you go wrong then with the New York Giants defensive end, uh, George Martin? What a sweetheart of a man. We're doing it again this year. I'm not going to announce the speaker yet, um, but it's going to be another great one. And I encourage people uh, to go there. It, it, you'll feel good about things, and it might change your life. Annexation. Now, this, this is a very uh, serious issue in Southern Orange County, and it could also spread to other areas of the county. We know this. Uh, when I was running for, for county executive, I pledged that if litigation or if annexation that was not in the best interest happened, we would join the lawsuit. And I see uh, Mayor Queenan from Woodbury here, and I know a bunch of other, our other partners are in the room as well. I'm proud that we all teamed up together. When do you see Republicans and Democrats working together for something that's right. We need to do what's in, the, what's in the best interest of the public. And when it's not, we need to fight it. And the county legislature voted 19 to 1, very unified on this. And it, it's not about who lives where. It's about following the law. And as we know, the law has not been followed here. And it's time to change that. And it's not one of those slap on the wrist things. This is a real coalition of, like I said, very Bipartisan. Washington and Albany could really learn from this group of people here. So I'm proud of the people that, that stood up here for this. I'm sorry. So sewer, uh, we were awarded a, a grant from the Empire State uh, to uh, acquire the Mid-Hudson sewer plant. Not sexy stuff, but just bear with me. It'll get better. Uh, what we facilitate sewer on a 17M corridor which has, been, which has been looked at in Orange County as a future growth corridor. And we're going to talk about water there next. So the recommendations of the county master plan for the sewer is going to be coming out this June. Uh, I know Delaware Engineering's in the back of the room. They're, they're spearheading this. And they're going to talk about where the su future sewer growth is, if there is any, in different areas of the, of the county. And that'll be out by this summer. So one other bone of contention, and Mayor Welly couldn't be here from Harriman. Um, but we did meet and talk about this for a long time, and I think the treatment plant is nobody knows how much sewer is coming into it and from who. The meters that were there have been broken, and then there's other areas that have no meters coming in. So I'm proud to say that all the meters that were broken have been repaired, and the only remaining areas that don't have meters are going to get them, and we have an RFP already put together to make sure that happens. So now, business knowing which community is contributing how much and what type of sewer. This is good positive stuff. It's good government. Let's talk about water resource development. Police Drive, that's the first one. I was a supervisor in Chester when the community in Goshen, there was a neighborhood, uh, their water, their wells were contaminated by MTBE contamination from the Orange County um, Highway Garage. Um, we were in litigation. The county was in litigation when I took office. I made it a priority to get this settled and fixed. Not only is the lawsuit settled, but we are now providing clean drinking water to these people's houses. This is the right thing to do. So I'm proud of that. Let's talk about Door Kill. I know you can't do much with the guy on the left, but this is Charlie Carnes. He's the supervisor of Crawford, a good partner of mine, a good friend, and he, I make fun of him a lot. Uh, but he does a wonderful job out there. Door Kill and the indigo, which will be next, are urban folklore in Orange County. For 30, 40 years, these have been, they were purchased back then, some of them uh, longer, and they were earmarked for future water resources for the county. Nothing's been done on them. This is 1,700 acres out in Crawford. Uh, drove it last week, and I will tell you, right now, we are moving forward with test wells on there, the 72-hour test wells, to see how much water they yield. Things are happening there. 
That water will facilitate the pine bush corridor up there. These are good, positive things to do. And guess what? Taxpayers, we paid for this decades ago. It's time to put it to work. Indigo. Indigo is another piece of property uh, in the Mount Hope, way beyond the uh, Walk Hill, uh, Middletown area. That whole cluster over there, most of it's in Mount Hope, uh, was earmarked for future reservoir. And uh, what I would like to ask right now is Joe DiStefano, the mayor of Middletown, to come up with me quick. I think our attorneys both looked at these, and it's not you and I giving the mortgage away to our house, but uh, we have reached an agreement, the, the mayor and I, for now water for the Indigo to facilitate the 17M corridor and that whole area out in Weyweyanda. This is something that's been talked about for 20, 30, 40 years. We're making it happen together, and we're going to be sending this to the legislature, uh, and, and I'm, I couldn't be happier. Joe, Thank good you. to see you. I actually, I see De Stefano's restaurant as the thing here. Is that part of the deal here or no? We're selling the water. You're selling the water. Thank you, Mayor. Oh, thank and you. it's been a pleasure working with you. Great job. Thank, thank you. you so much. And, and I will tell you, we are working with other communities right now to provide them with water with different parcels that the county has been sitting on as well. Solar panel, if you came up here, you probably noticed some of the solar panels that have been installed around the 911 center. They, are gonna, they were provided with a 100% grant from the state. Uh, solar City was the, uh, the, the developers that actually installed them. This will generate 4.2 million dollars, uh, 4.2 megawatts to this facility and when not in use, put back into the grid. And we're also looking at other properties that we own, buildings, landfills, open properties that we have off the tax rolls or on the tax rolls to use for future solar farms. Infrastructure. My guy, Chris Vibrock. The reason why, and, and I will tell you, he had a full head of hair when he started here. And uh, he works very hard. Every time I see him, it's, hi, Chris, I got another project for you. And he is always happy to, uh, to work on them. He does do a fantastic job with his team there. So bridges. When I took office, we had bridges that were still out from Irene. We build bridges, I say this, we build bridges in Afghanistan quicker than we do here, but we've changed that. In the last two years, the following five bridges have been repaired in Orange County. We have about 147 bridges. We should be redoing two a year. Up until recently, we've been only doing about one. So now we're heading in the right direction. We did five. We have one under construction now, the um, infamous Scotchtown Bridge that's been out for eight years, folks. Eight years, it's been one lane. It's, it'll be done in July. We plan on building and fixing six more by the time we're done next year. So we are really in high gear on bridges. And this is important for emergency services to get to people, obviously, for, for residents to get around. But also, when we show people here, businesses, and they come here and they see bridges out, we got to turn around, or what's down that road where you don't want to go, we end up going anyway, and there's a bridge out. Let me show you some of these. This Forge Hill Bridge, guys, in New Windsor, was built in the early 2000. In early 2000, this bridge was built. It wasn't built to last. This one is now reinforced. It's got a third uh, strand that can withstand the storms of today. This is the right way to do things, not spend millions of dollars for something that washes away years later. This bridge right here is built to last. Gotchdown Bridge is the one I refer to. You guys know this. One lane, blinking, you're sitting there. You're worried if someone's going to come up behind you too fast. It'll be done by June, July of this year. These are things, are positive indicators that things are heading in the right direction. The government center, we're, after five litigations last year and painful litigations that the county attorney's office, Chin, uh, spending all their time, they could have been working on that public health law that now we're able to get to. Finally, after those five, pieces, those five uh, lawsuits, or whatever you want to call them, went away, we're now heading in this direction. All the bids are going, and we're actually moving in the right direction. And so far, it's coming in under budget, so we'll keep our fingers. I know the legislature is just as anxious to watch it as well as I am. So good government. Camp LaGuardia, dormant. Camp LaGuardia being developed. 
Water uh, properties sat, sitting dormant for decades, now developing water resources to create jobs, and neglected infrastructure, rebuilding our infrastructure. So let's talk about taking care of our own, because the theme today is really taking care of our own, doing the right thing, making a difference. Veterans. We had our first ever uh, veterans hiring fair last year, 60 businesses, hundreds of veterans showed up. We're now expanding our veterans van service, which now gets veterans to the VA, not only across the river, but even down to New York City. And I'm proud to say we have our whole Veterans Affairs office here. So um, yeah, there's only one gentleman, but that's a good sign, I think, ladies out there. So everybody, please stand up. We have So we have, we, we have two brand new members of the team, and we have three members that have been there. The two ladies on the left, just so everybody knows out there, one is a Marine Corps veteran, and the other is, a, is an Army veteran from uh, Afghanistan, right? Served in Iraq. So, as well as Barbara and, Barbara and Carol and Christian, who have been with us, uh, Carol just bought in $108,000 on one case that a veteran was owed for, for disability benefits. These are the people we want interacting and helping our veterans. Thank you very much, all of you. So let's talk about helping our veterans. So we have some great stuff going on, guys, and, and I, I feel very good about this. These gentlemen that, that are, and I, are they both in the audience too? Or am I right? OK, good. We have two great guys that I had the pleasure of meeting. Uh, and we collaborated with a, a, a bunch of different partners to make this happen. But one of them was Barry. Barry, would you stand up first? Thank you, Barry. Barry, Barry was, what, you and John F. Kennedy, right? John F. Kennedy, uh, a veteran, he was highlighted in a time cell record uh, for living in his car. And he's a tough, strong, proud American, as is his friend Floyd that don't want a, didn't want a handout. They're happy not, and they didn't take a handout. They got what was entitled to them. Not only are they both senior citizens, they're both veterans. Putting it together, we have now have Floyd and Barry are doing better. And Floyd, would you please stand up? Because you're a Marine. I know you're proud. <laughs> Thank you so much. Floyd, uh, Barry was living in his car, and Floyd was living on the banks of the Never Sink, right, Floyd? I mean, Barry, right, on the, on the banks of the Never, Never Sink River. We, we owe more to our veterans. And, and it was just about getting a face-to-face -to, -face to get them to, to now be where they got what they were entitled to. And that wouldn't have been put together without a couple people. Christian Farrell from the Veterans Affairs worked with, uh, with us on it. Chris Molinelli, where are you, Chris? Stand up. I know you're sitting right between them. Chris from Honor. This is called making a difference. And I, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention my, my, my friend, Chief Bill Warden. Bill, stand up. You deserve, Bill was a part of this. These, these gentlemen teamed up and helped put this together. And the importance of this is not only doing the right thing and making sure that they got what's entitled to them, but it's helped us with other veterans around the county. A gentleman, while we were talking to Floyd, we had a gentleman from New Windsor that the VA had cut off and said that he missed a doctor's appointment, he must be dead, cut all his benefits. Then we had another veteran, a, a young lady from Newburgh, who was homeless and is now placed in, in, in proper care. The leadership that these two gentlemen and the people that helped these gentlemen have now opened a door to tell other veterans, that, you know, maybe I should look into us. Maybe it's not, maybe I, I do deserve it. And I was so proud to be with you for this happy, good, positive news. So we're going to continue to find housing for veterans. These are things happening in our community, and we should all be proud. So fighting addiction, serious issue around the country. Uh, we organized a healthcare symposium here where we had the, the professionals from all over the region, including other counties, said, we wish we had what's going on in Orange County. Come here and said, wow, we're so happy that you invited us to get the best information on how to treat and, and fight uh, opiate addiction. Last year, we had 125 law enforcement officers trained with Narcam. It's saving people's lives. 
My wife and I talked to one of our police officers. They saved the guy four times, giving people chances on life, another chance to get their lives together. 630 county employees and community providers were trained with this as well. It saves people, reverses the effects of, of uh, overdose. Over 100 lives, this is what the State Department of Health has reported, there's probably more. But I think we all can agree, one life, giving them one chance, is worth it. Our county jail, and I see our under sheriff Kenny Jones, and I know the sheriff of obviously was up here before, our county jail is the first jail in New York State to develop an opiate addiction pilot plan. These are good things. Thinking outside the box, not being afraid to take a chance to try something new. So let's talk about funding necessary programs because this is what Nadja and, and I really the core, hits to the core of us. Last year, you remember in the State of the County Address, I played a video about domestic violence and how we take it seriously in Orange County. Last year, New York State neglected to fund important programs here that impacted Orange County. Orange County took a stand. Safe homes. If you don't know what they do, you haven't lived in Orange County. They care for people that really needed the most. In a society where you think the people should be looking for, the, the, the perpetrators should be looking for a safe home, we help provide the survivors with a safe place to live and, and, and grow, and they, some, many of them have families. They were cut. We provided for, now, this, the state budget's enacted in June, and they get the notice that, they don't, that they're losing funding in June. It's in the middle of our year. Darcy Miller and our team, the budget team, Neil Blair, who never gets the support because he gives the honest opinion. Sometimes it's good news, sometimes it's bad news, but it's the right news. Uh, put to, help us put together $95,000 to help continue that critical program. It's non-negotiable. It has to continue. These are the amount of people in Orange County that are serviced by safe homes, 2,225. So important stuff. And I call people out when they don't uh, fulfill their promises. Rape crisis program. You heard Nadja talk about it. We provided $85,000 in, in, in uh, this year's budget and, we, in, and last year in the middle of the year to make sure that they didn't go away. They were contemplating they might have been able, without the funding, to stop, uh, stop operating on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Can you imagine that? That's, I mean, it's, it's an embarrassment that it happened from the state and I know that the county government is happy, everybody in DSS, to make this fill in this gap. This is the amount of people that are serviced here. Now, obviously, most of them are not victims. There's also a huge part of this that's an education caveat that goes to first responders uh, to make sure that they're doing the right things when they're caring for these survivors of these horrible uh, crimes. I take it very seriously. Orange Cares and the United Way was speaking and they announced that one out of five kids in America goes to bed hungry. And I had just come back from Africa with the, with the Navy, and I couldn't believe the poverty in Africa. And you come here to the United States, we have it all, and one out of five of our children in the United States are going to bed hungry. So we decided to do something about it. And we, we put in close to $400,000 in our budget. We didn't, really didn't get a lot of media on it. We should have. This should be front page stuff rather than the presidential primaries. But this is good stuff, and I won't say any more about that. Uh, we partnered with the Food Bank of the Hudson Valley, and I will tell you, hundreds of kids in Orange County today are getting food, and there's more of them that need it. So we need some of these school districts and some of these communities to open up with us. We're not gonna put you on the front page of the paper. We had a map earlier that showed where we're at, and I'll tell you, I live in Chester. I, we started this program in Chester. Every community could use this program, and they shouldn't be embarrassed to have it. So it's a positive thing. We're changing kids' lives now, and we got to continue to grow it. Let's talk about public safety. Social host law. Uh, last week, we went back to uh, my old high school, Munner Woodbury, and this was a great collaboration. This is one of those things where we talk about where county government work together. The county exec's office, the DA's office, the sheriff's office, the county legislature, all working in tandem. I, don't, I think it was a 21-0 vote. Not one issue, and this was passed for the good. And what this law does is it holds anybody 18 years of, uh, or older responsible if they permit underage drinking uh, on their premises. Just getting the word out on this makes a difference. Active shooter training. 
Not sexy to talk about. Every week, we have another instance of these horrible crimes going on in Orange County. Important. It's on everybody's mind, no matter what you do, whether you're a school teacher, whether you're a cop, whether you work in a business, whether you're a mom or a dad, are you worried what's going to happen? So what we did is, first thing, we started to train our staff, and we're going to continue to train our staff in Orange County government and make some different changes the way we do things. Unfortunately, it's the best way to protect everyone. The second thing we did is we collaborated with the chamber, and we offered a class here, and it was a, it was a, it was a pretty solid crowd of people here, and we gave a class on what to do in an active shooter situation. It was very emotional. It is not an easy thing to see them in are in tears, but it's important. And, and it will, at the end of the day, I think it'll bring you at ease if you at least know what you can do if something, God forbid, this horrible happens and you're a part of it, or you're in the situation. We also now are offering visits to schools and businesses from our law enforcement special, working with local law enforcement as well to get them to make sure that they're up to speed on what they need to do. So we'll meet with the business, we'll talk to the employees, these are the things you can do. We'll also take a survey of your facility to say and, and recommend some of the things that you can do to improve the security in your facility. It's the way that our world is now, folks. I'm proud to have done it. Dave Hoover and I went personally a few weeks ago, met with a school, walked through a school with, with, with little kids there and started them through the process along with our state police partners. It's an important thing to do. It's unfortunate, but I'm proud that we're leading the way and we're offering this to the, to the public. Preparing for the worst, this facility says it all, but you, the things that happen here are really incredible. Uh, and the people here in this office, last Saturday on the chair, meeting with us, talking about different issues on uh, whether it's rail, fire. But we do this on a regular basis. Our fire training center is second to none. We do drills for oil trains when the back and crude uh, started to come out and the water rescues, God forbid an incident at Indian Point, and of course, weather-related issues. Code Red, we just launched this last year. If there's one of the few takeaways you have here, go, when you get back to your home, your business, go to our website and register for this. It will notify you if there's a countywide emergency. It'll notify you depending on your zip code and your address. If there's a regional thing, you want to know if roads are shut down. You want to know if there's a fire and you have to evacuate. Or maybe a, a, a train derails. These are important things that you need to know. All it is is just like you get when you get the Amber Alerts on your phone. Critical stuff, and it could save a life. Let's say thank you to people. This is important. Last Christmas time, and I was at a Christmas party, a holiday party. I got a VPC. And... Uh, Rich Mayfield, our, com our uh, Commissioner of Consumer Affairs uh, of, um, of Community Development, came up to me and he said, you know, I drove in front of the uh, honor, our homeless shelter in Middletown, and I saw this little girl playing with a rusty bucket. So he said, and I asked them what happened to the playground, and they said, somebody stole the playground. So soul some soulless person, I'm gonna, not going to curse, um, stole a playground from our homeless shelter three or four years ago. And never put it back. So the next morning, conveniently, um, and I've said the chamber five times too. Sorry, Joe, you got trumped by the chamber. But I was at a chamber breakfast, and I see Chris, well, now, and I was on my way up to Albany, and I said, Chris, somebody told me that someone stole a playground from homeless kids. And he goes, you're right, they did. He goes, they never replaced it. So I said, if I get one, can we, can we put it there? No problem, let's do it. By noon that day, we had this, home, this playground ordered, Department of Public Works, along with Jimmy Burpo, and more importantly, a private company, MNR Energy Resources. Where are you? I see Michelle and Melissa here. Both stand up, please. Please stand up. Thank you. When we opened this thing right before Christmas, there was dozens of kids climbing all over it. That's the right thing to do for this community. And you need to, we need to signal out and really put on the pedestal the businesses that really step up. And Mark Mosier in the back is here. Mark, stand up, please. Another, he's actually a Navy veteran, too. Thank you, Mark. 
So when I, and, and when, back in my days in Chester, they volunteered to pay, pay for our fireworks show. And uh, when I came into the county uh, the office of the executive, they said, we can do this on a county level. And we said, boy, this hasn't been done in 10 years. Let's do it. They sponsored the last two years of our fireworks shows over at Thomas Bull Park. But there's more than that. And, and Alex, don't get nervous. They're going to continue Chester's love, too. Um, so they do the fireworks in Chester. They do the fireworks at our county park. But last year, we had the air show we talked about, right? They bought 150 tickets a day that they gave to veterans and even contracted out busing to make sure disabled veter veterans got to the air show. That's a company that steps up. Thank you very much. Thank you. Families of war veterans, this is near and dear to my heart, and I'm singling them out because uh, before I was the exec, I was the executive, I was the, the um, chairman of the board, took office, and Dan O'Kane, where are you, Dan? Stand up, because I know you're tall. Where, you're in the back. You should, okay. He's in the shadows. Uh, so wave, Dan. The importance to this, and last week, uh, Colonel LaBarge spoke at Stewart Air Guard Base. We lost five airmen three days before Christmas last year. Two of them were from our local Air Guard base at, at uh, Stewart. And there's a lot of expenses, believe it or not, that don't get paid for the families to accommodate them when they have somebody killed in the line of duty. Believe me, it would make you sick. I called up Dan. I said, I'm working with Stewart Air Guard base. In order to accommodate the, and these, they, they had the two gentlemen that were killed had wives and kids, little kids, right before Christmas. They paid thousands of dollars in expenses to accommodate those families. And Dan, thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate you doing it. It's important stuff. I, 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 I wouldn't get out of here alive for it with Jeff Berkman and um, uh, Mike Paduke if I didn't mention the Harris Trail. But I also have another, it is, uh, I also see Jimmy DeSalvo. We're getting to you, Jimmy, don't get nervous. The Heritage Trail. And now, I told you I just ran here. My, my wife can, uh, can uh, contest, uh, contest that I was just running about an uh, hour and a half ago. It's an awesome recreational uh, opportunity here. Our residents, people come here using it. A lot of great nonprofits use it. Developing it from Middletown to North is something we've been talking about the last year. You know it's happening. Great stuff. And Miguel Rodriguez sh shows me, uh, the, the president of the council uh, Middletown, business in Middletown to now take advantage of this new increased traffic. It's a, we got a $1 million grant from the IDA. Thank you, Lori, for making sure that happens, as well as being a partner with economic development with Maureen and the rest of our team. We got $500,000 from the state. I won't beat them up on this slide. And we got 80% of our funding will also come from the federal government. But we need to do more. Last week, uh, this is myself. Jimmy DeSalvo, our county legislator, and Mayor uh, Welly. This is the section in Harriman, ready to go. If we're doing the Middletown section, you're going to see this, we might as well finish this one. We already have, just to the left of where uh, he's standing, an ice cream stand that wants to open up. They're already under construction in Harriman. It's such a great resource. And the money put in here is definitely worth it for our taxpayers and for what will come afterwards. So let's look at that. The green is the original Heritage Trail. And I wish I could get you a better map, but I'm going to blame McCary on this one. Uh, but it is good. Uh, this section here is all we got to complete. And we finished a job in Harriman. So let's do it. Jimmy, you think it's a good idea? It's the right thing to do. It's a great thing for the county. And I'm going to be putting forth a proposal to the legislature. I already put Chris Vibrock to come out and look at this. It's a great thing to do. It's a great resource for Orange County. So here's the key takeaways. $40 million in budget cuts. Zero, use, zero dollars used in the general fund. A stark difference than most governments and most counties, uh, and in particular, Orange County in 2013. Now we're using zero. Thousands of jobs recovered. All the union contracts are signed. Camp LaGuardia, we're now moving forward with a plan. Tourism is now being promoted. We've updated our health code, which is in the process to now help cities, villages, and towns. Our foreign trade zone is reorganized. Infrastructure is now a priority. 
We're helping our residents in need. I have always said, you guys saw the slides in the last two years. There are pictures of an aircraft carrier turning around. Now we are actually heading together in the right direction. And we county, all of us, whether you're one of our partners, we should be proud. And I want to just play one little synopsis of what we all have to offer in Orange County. Hi, I'm Steve Newhouse, County Executive of Orange County, New York. Historic landmarks and world-class shopping all right here. Come stay, come play, come dine in Orange County, New York. We have, uh, we have so much to be proud of in Orange County, we really do. And one of the things I always put as a centerpiece is economic development. And I wanna, I wanna, getting people a job is probably the most important thing you can do for them besides education. And I wanna highlight one other individual. Cliff, would you please stand up? This young man was looking for a job for uh, a little bit of a time. And I am so proud that you were working with us today. These are the type of lives that we change. And Cliff, I'm happy to have you here today. I really am. And we are all happy to have you as our, one of our fellow residents. The, the state of the county is strong. It's strong because we're working together. And really, I think if we continue this hard work, our best days are ahead. So if you get down from what you see going on on TV tonight or Washington or Albany, be proud of what's going on in your home community because uh, we're really doing the right thing and we're making a difference. Thank you all for being here today. Appreciate it.